Welcome to this week's edition of Good Books Radio. Audiobooks.com is the chief underwriter for Good Books Radio, which is produced by UTRGB Media Services for Rio Grande Valley Public Radio. And now here's your host, David Hinojosa. Welcome to another edition of Good Books Radio. This is your host, David Hinojosa. My guest today has been a contributor to the New York New Yorker magazine since 1999. He also won the Thurber Prize for American Humor in 2012 with the debut novel titled Truth in Advertising. And today he's here to talk to us about his new book, Love Poems for Married Couples. Mr. John Kenny. John, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, David. Congratulations on your new book. I found it extremely funny. I couldn't put it down. Thank you. <laughs> Nor well, should you ever put it down. Ever. Carry it everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I am. I have Good. it with me right now. <laughs> so I, I'd like to begin this interview with a, a little bit about your background so everybody gets to uh, know you. So uh, I read on, um, on an interview with the LA Times that you're a copywriter for a major ad agency. Are you still working as a copywriter today? Yeah, you know, I work as a freelance copywriter. Uh, you know, not that I need the money because obviously poetry, you know, is incredibly <laughs> lucrative, David. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I still work as a as a freelance copywriter, which I I enjoy a lot, um, and uh, and do my my writing, my non lucrative writing on the side. I see. And uh, how how did you start as a copywriter? Um, failure. Uh, at lots of other things. Uh, I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to, you know, be a bunch of different things. And um, I'd always written in college and after, uh, you know, submitting very badly written stories to magazines and being rejected uh, roundly, uh, which is a actually a, a very good uh, thing to have happen. It, it, it pushes you. Uh, and I ended up working uh, at an ad agency in Boston and uh, ended up moving to New York City and working there, and uh, but I was always writing on the side, and uh, I was fortunate enough to to publish uh, my first novel a few years back and my second one about a month ago. Mm-hmm. Now, have have you always wanted to write about humor, or did you try? Yeah, out- you know, I I um there's a section of the New Yorker magazine, Shouts and Murmurs, and uh, you know some of the some of the great American comedy writers have have written for it, Steve Martin and, you know, Woody Allen and um, a long, long list of of folks. Um, And I submitted uh, allegedly funny pieces to the magazine for about 10 years Mm -hmm. in my late 20s and early 30s before they accepted one. And and that was a huge thrill. And so I've been contributing off and on since. And uh, this this book actually started as a New Yorker piece um, about three years ago, I think. Um, it was called uh, Valentine's Day Poems for Married People. It was like six or eight incredibly bad little poems. And uh, last summer, my publisher asked me if I would turn it into a book. Uh-huh. And obviously you accepted, <laughs> as you would. I, as soon as they offered money, I accepted, uh, you know, quickly. So, yeah, that was that – was, uh, it was – um, they needed it quickly, though, because they wanted to get it out this year. And so uh, they they mentioned it in mid-June, and they said, look, we're going to need a finished manuscript uh, on August 1. So I had a – it was about a six-week sprint wow. to to write about 70 poems. Well, I'm and, glad uh, you accepted so it. Was, it was interesting. <laughs> now, who was your inspiration when writing these poems? How Who did you think about when you were writing these? Um, that's an interesting question. I reached out to lots of friends. Um, you know, poetry, good poetry is an amazing thing, but it takes itself very seriously. Um, Mm -hmm. rightly so. Uh, and if written badly, and these are nothing, if not written badly, uh, it just lends itself to a different voice. Um, but you know, Having heard back from lots of friends, uh, people in different varying relationships, living together and long-term married couples and gay and straight, mm-hmm. what was interesting to me was the universality in so many relationships, the weird little peccadilloes of, of, of life living with the same person every day, mm-hmm. whether you're with kids or been together for 20 years, we get on each other's nerves, we argue, we laugh, we go on vacation. Um, there's, 
there's just rich material there for the absurdity of, of life. So that's what I was trying to do. Uh -huh. now, now, have you always liked poetry, or is this something that just came about and you wrote it to New Yorker and they decided to Since this it? is a radio interview and I want to sound really intelligent, okay. I should say that I have always been a deep reader of poetry, but <laughs> that would be a massive lie. Um, no, I, I, you know, I was an English major in college. Um, I think like a lot of students in high school, I didn't understand. I had no idea what was going on when I would be forced to read a poem that was 150 years old written by a dead white man. Mm -hmm. Um, I got into poetry in a, you know, I don't have a deep wellspring of knowledge about poetry, but you know, I am a Seamus Haney fan. I'm a Mary Oliver fan. I'm a Billy Collins fan. Um, David White, the British, uh, poet. Um, uh, I, I do like it. I think it's what language would be if it were music in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it's like me trying to play in the NFL. It's just I can't write poetry because it's it's an extraordinary talent, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can barely write prose, um, <laughs> as your readers of this book will see. Mm -hmm. But you know, poetry is like a it's it's a whole different universe, and done well, it 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 blows me away. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a poem in this book that you say it's your favorite poem that you're glad and made it to the cut? Oh, that's like asking if which is my favorite child, David. I dislike all of them. I mean, I love all of them. Um, how about <clears throat> how about why are you in the shower with me? And I don't mean you, David. <laughs> okay. Would you like to read? Why are you in the shower with me? Did the bathtub shrink, I ask, because here we are, naked, showering together like we once did all the time. Remember, at the beginning, we would stand and talk, seals slipping by one another, a playful ease letting the other into the stream. Now, I'm not sure what you're doing in here. I'm freezing. There's shampoo stinging my eyes. You just stepped on my foot. For the love of Christ, who flushed the toilet because I'm being scalded alive. Get out, now. It was a nice idea, though, honey. Could you close the door? <laughs> Those I mean, are... I've been married for 14 years, and, you know, I, in those early days of wonder and romance, it's just, you know, it's that crazy chemical rush. And then right. <laughs> the idea of showering with my wife, I mean, she would she would beat me to a pulp. <laughs> Get out of this room now. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, mentioned, you have a poem, actually, that you dedicate to your wife. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to, to – does she share the same sense of humor as you? Uh, very much. She is much, much funnier than I, um, much smarter. She's a wonderful writer and editor, and, and I can't uh, credit her enough. Um, I would not have been able to do this book without her. And uh, I'm – you know, to sort of paraphrase Churchill, his quote was, you know, the most brilliant achievement uh, was my ability to persuade my wife to marry me. Um, so, yeah, I, the last poem of the book is uh, uh, not funny, although maybe some of your listeners will think none of them are funny. Um, I kept wanting to write a funny poem to her at the end, but it ended up coming out um, sort of serious. So uh, I did show that to her before we pu published the book. and. Um, right. She said, um, "You have embarrassed yourself yet again." No, she was very, she was very grateful. Well, I, I thought it was very thoughtful and, and heart though. And what's, it was a little bit funny though. But uh, I just wanted to. Did she like the book overall? I think that's a perfect epitaph for my grave, David. <laughs> Here lies John Kenny. A little bit funny. <laughs> I'm not I like about that. The book, just the last poem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want me to read that last poem? Sure, if if you. It's like long. It. That's okay. No, I won't read that one. I'll read something else. Do you tell me what you want me to read? You please choose. Uh, it's up to you. Um, I can't say swear words, right? No. <laughs> Sorry. That's not a problem at all. Um, how about what I meant to say to your mother when she called and you were out with friends? Sure. <laughs> your daughter is out with friends, and I am here alone with the kids. I said. How nice, she said. How are my grandkids? How are you, Steve? Me? I'm fine, fine. Your voice sounds a little strange, she said. 
oh, you know, life and work and stress and the kids, it's fine. But I do find a kind of deep sadness overwhelms me most days. I think that's pretty common, though. Do you ever feel like you're dying? Ever look at a fork and have no idea of the name of it? No? Oh. What? Yes, that's a cork being opened. Why? I just guess that, of course, the wheels on the bus go round and round. What else would they do? And this swear word, wipers situation. If they go swish, 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 you have to replace them. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what I meant to say was, hey, Fran, how are you? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> You're very kind. You know, I, 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 again, I enjoyed every single one of the poems, but the one that uh, I, I can say was very funny to me was the therapy one. I think the, uh, it's a four-part poem. Yes. How did that come about? How did that idea come about of doing a, four, a poem in four parts? Yeah, some... I have to give a thousand percent credit to my editor, uh, Sally Kim. Um, okay. I had written the poem uh, uh, for your listeners. It's it's a poem about um, a couple that goes to couples counseling. <laughs> Not that I've ever been. <laughs> um, and But it was long. And, and she said, you know, it might be funny if you broke it up into different sections. And so uh, it's four different poems throughout the book, the same couple in counseling, and it degenerates. So mm -hmm. that was her idea. That was a very good idea. Great. You picked the one poem that I had nothing to do with. <laughs> Great. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Now, uh, who... I wanted to know who has influenced your writing. Who would you say these are major influences in the way that you write? Because I've read some of your New Yorker articles, and again, I found them uh, completely hilarious. So, could you uh, share with us that? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, you know, when Woody Allen was young, he wrote uh, shouts and murmurs pieces, and uh, when I was in high school, I, I uh, loved his his writing. Uh, I love Steve Martin's writing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a couple of New Yorker writers, a woman who passed away years ago named Veronica Geng, okay. G-E-N-G. -E I mean, she was one of the funniest people to ever write for the New Yorker magazine, um, I think. Uh, there's a woman named Patty Marks, M-A-R-X. She was an original writer of Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. um, I'll read anything she writes just because she's hilarious. Um, um, but, you know, I, I think if if your listeners are looking for an ideal way to sort of break into poetry that um, is not a deeply tangled kind of thing, like the stuff we all had to read in high school, <laughs> there's an amazing uh, poet named Billy Collins. Okay. Um, and uh, I just think he's, a laugh out loud funny, a very beautiful writer. Um, he has a collection of poetry called Picnic Lightning that I would urge your uh, listeners to buy along with my book. <laughs> Actually, if you, you know what, if, if, if they had a gun to their head, buy Billy Collins and save mine for later. Cause he's the real deal. Um, so those are, yeah, I mean, those are some of the people who I think are, are really funny. I mean, look, then, you know, uh, the, the sort of the funniest people in America today who are writing are all women. Mm -hmm. You know, the teen, the Tina Fey's of the world and the Amy Poehler's of right. the world, Amy Schumer's, you know, the, 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 the funniest women, the funniest people in America are women today, uh, to my mind, not middle-aged white guys like myself. <laughs> well, you so. do, but you do write a very funny, very you're funny very, book. <laughs> you're very kind and you're my new favorite person in Texas. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit uh, about your uh, Truth in Advertising book. So you won the Thurber Prize, which is the Prize for American Humor, back in 2012, right? Could you tell us a little bit about that? How did that happen? Sure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the yeah, I mean, the book was submitted uh, as you do. You know, it's I don't know, 80 or 100 people vie for the prize, and it was shortlisted. It was one of three books. Uh, it was a finalist, and uh, you know, I never thought in a million years. Um, that that I would win. Um, you know, Truth in Advertising, my first novel. Um, for the f for the very few people in Texas who have not read the book, um, it's a story of a guy almost 40 years old. He works in advertising, and uh, he's sort of an early midlife crisis. He mm -hmm. is unmarried. He is sort of emotionally um, 
stunted. Um, he had some tough things happen in his past, uh, and he is estranged from his family. If that isn't comedy, I don't know what is. <laughs> um, so that's the you know that, that's that's the book. Uh, I was up against some really tough. Um, uh, people who were really, really funny, and I, I really, I never thought I'd win. So it was, it was a thrill to win. I have to say. Wow. Well, I'm very uh, congratulations on that. I know Thank it, you. It was a while back, but it's still a huge honor to. Thank you. Yeah, it really, it really, it was great fun. Um, so. Now, uh, what book do you consider as the all-time funniest book for you? The not not necessarily a poetry book, but just sure. uh, just any sure. book. Uh, that you consider funny? Um, <laughs> I think I would have to give the nod uh, to a book called A Confederacy of Dunces. Wow, me too. <laughs> yeah, by John Kennedy Tool. John Tool. Kennedy Tool, yes, absolutely. And I just, I remember reading that book for the first time because I've read it a few times and just pounding the table laughing. Uh, Ignatius J. Riley, I yes. believe, is the character's name, and uh, it's a remarkable story, and, 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 and frankly, a sad story. John Kennedy Tool, he was a, a brilliant and gifted writer, right. uh, but he couldn't get anyone to publish his book, yeah. um, and he uh, ended up uh, taking his own life. Right. Um, and his his mother made it her mission to get the book published, and uh, she. Uh, I, who was it? She who was it? She gave it to. I think a professor. Uh, yeah, a former a professor, professor of, of yeah, him. a former professor at like Tulane or LSU or something like that. Yes. But a very well regarded writer, and, and I'm embarrassed now because I'm blanking on who it was. It was a it was a very well known writer, mm -hmm. um, and you know she came into his office, and you know obviously this was embarrassing for him because he thought, oh geez, you know this is, you know this isn't going to be any good. Mm -hmm. And he sat at his desk and he read and he read and he read and he couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the book came out and it was, I, I think it was an instant bestseller. It's been in print for many, many years, but it's a breathtaking piece of work. Right. It, it won yeah. a Pulitzer, I believe. Or yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a breathtaking piece of work. It's it's uh, because it combines the two things that I just love in a novel mm -hmm. it just laugh out loud funny and just it just sort of rip your heart out beautiful right i i comp i couldn't agree with you more i that's one of my favorite books and the other one that i really enjoyed was good omens i don't know if you've ever read that uh, no i by, haven't but i who wrote that i neil, must i must read neil it. gaiman and uh, oh Terry he's Pratchett. an amazing guy he's yes. an amazing writer so they, they wrote back and forth because i think gaiman was in england i believe and pratchett was in, in the states or vice versa i can't remember and they kept writing uh, you know back and forth to finish the novel and it was uh it's, it's to me, it's one of the funniest books I've ever read, um, Good Omens. I was just wondering if you had read it, too. No, I have to look that up. Um, yeah, so. Okay. So, uh, now, what uh, what do you want readers to take away from uh, from your book? Oh, gosh. Um, I hope they chuckle. I hope uh, they laugh a bit. Um, I hope they buy lots of copies for every man, woman, and child they've ever met. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, marriage is a funny thing, right? I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a great quote. I forget who said it. I actually don't know who said it, but it's, it goes something like a successful marriage requires falling in love many times, but always with the same person. And, and I just think this, this crazy thing we do, uh, commit to, you know, whatever that commitment is, whether it's a marriage in a church or whether it's uh, you decide simply to be together, which, you know, more and more people are doing, yeah. um, whether you need a piece of paper or not, it's it's an extraordinary thing. And it comes with lots of challenges and, and it's completely insane and ridiculous. Um, but what would we do without it? It's like the opening lines of Annie Hall mm -hmm. where Woody Allen says, uh, there's an old joke two elderly women are at a Catskill Mountains resort and one says to the other, gee, the food here is really terrible. And the other one says, yeah, I know. And such small portions. <laughs> That's sort of marriage for me. It's, it's, it's nuts and insane, but what would we do without it? Right, right. Now, uh, what is uh, next for John Kenny? 
I'll probably have lunch. <laughs> I mean, any future projects that we should be looking yeah, out for? Yeah, you know, I'm 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 working on uh, some things now, uh, and I have the, a weird superstition where I don't really like to talk about something that I'm in the middle of because uh, oh. uh, it'll ruin it, and I'm a weirdo. You don't want to jinx it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm you know I'm trying to okay. I'm trying to write another, trying to aspire to be the next John Kennedy tool. Uh, but yeah, I've got some things in the work, so we'll see what happens. That's awesome. Uh, we'll be looking for that. Uh, any dream project you'd like to work on? Dream project. Um, it would be fun to adapt uh, one of my books into a movie. That would be fun. Um, dream projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. If you're lucky enough to get to write for a living, uh, that's pretty great. So uh, I count myself real lucky. Right. Well, uh, is there anything you would like to add, John? Uh, no, only that, you know, I, I hope people enjoy it. And if they don't, please feel free to lie. <laughs> uh, before, before we leave, I just want to ask you one last thing. Uh, your last name is Kenny. Is there any, are you in any way related to Doug Kenny? I am not. I wish oh. I was. Uh, I mean, that man sort of recreated American comedy um, with, you know, at, at the National Lampoon and before that, the Harvard Lampoon and uh, right. Animal House, you know, uh, arguably one of the funniest movies ever. Right. Um, yeah, he was he was a genius and died much too young. So uh, but unfortunately, no relations. I see. Well, John, it was great having you uh, today. I greatly appreciate you taking the time. David, thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed it. I, mean, I really appreciate the opportunity. I wish you all the best with uh, Love Poems for Married Couples, uh, which is, I believe, available now at all major book retailers and online. It sure is. Okay. Well, it's, thank uh, you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, for everybody, it's, it's a really fun read this Valentine's Day, and I highly recommend it. Um, it would make also a great gift. I want to thank uh, all of our listeners for tuning in to our interview today and remind you that you can always listen to our interviews on our YouTube channel, Good Looks Radio, Strong and Cook. This was your host, David Inojosa. Thank you for listening. <laughs>